welcome to the call, guys. Um, my name is William LeBaron. I have Louis Zidia, our CEO, on the call as well. And I mean, you guys are familiar. This is our third retention rockstar group community call. Um, but Louis, I think you wanted to start us out on on today's call. Yeah, I was talking to William a little bit. Um, and this kind of fits the narrative here. So a week ago, uh, maybe two weeks ago, William and Bobby and I, uh, we went and fished the Green River. That's here in Utah, comes out of Flaming Gorge. Um, it's the best place to fly fish in the continental United States. Like yeah, it's, it's just, known to be the best. Yeah, I mean, if if anyone knows fly fishing, then that's one of those amazing rivers. It's just crystal clear. You can see to the bottom. You can see just all the tons of fish in there. So, and that's part of the fun. You're like, okay, I know the fish are here. It's just a matter of me getting them on the line, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I've got a little dory drift boat. So I took him up there um, and, uh, you know, had a, we had a super fun time. Um, so in that whole, you know, fishing experience, we get on the river, you know, we talk to these guides before, kind of get a feel for what's bite, you know, what they're biting on. Because, um, you know, I'm no professional at all. I just, I've usually go with guides, but since I've got this boat, I wanted to kind of DIY it. And so I've been doing it a few times. Um, so we had this wonderful day and float down the river. Um, William caught a bunch of fish. Bobby didn't. Right. Uh, and if you guys don't know, Bobby's our CEO, he's a super brilliant guy. Um, and he was, I mean, there was, there was not a lack of having the right, you know, gear or the right fly or anything. Like they were using the same fly. We found out what they're biting. William, Bobby were using the same fly. Um, really, the thing that I noticed throughout the whole day as I was kind of coaching him along was that William's line was in the water way more hours of the day than Bobby's was. And I really think that was really, that was the only difference, right? Uh, so I brought that up because I really think that kind of, you know, relates to the, what we want to communicate to everyone um, on some of these group coaching calls, at least early on, is you can have the most wonderful sales pitch and the most wonderful products. And we can give you these tools to tell you, to show you the fish in the river. Like we know there's deals happening right here. Um, but it's a matter of you, you've got to have that fly in the water more often in order to catch those. So, um, so I'll leave you with that kind of little metaphor. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much more that we can do. We can, you know, we can work on, Hey, let's talk about scripts and creatives and all that kind of stuff, but we need to really communicate and get everyone on board with like, you've got to make those, those attempts. Um, and they don't need to be complicated. It's like, you know, with each alert, if they, you can just make an attempt to, to connect, um, that's where we see the difference between these producers that are making a ton of transactions for a monitor base and these producers that art and have very similar client bases so and one of the things that we did is as we floated the river we saw other people catch fish and for the first half of the day like before lunch we didn't catch anything but we watched and we got feedback and we started to understand okay you know this is the depth that they're at this is the setup that people are using and so when we adapted to what we could see was working with other people um that's when we started catching fish and at that point it changed and I would say that there was hardly a time when I wasn't, when I was in the water for a reasonable amount of time that I wasn't catching a fish or reeling a fish in. Like it really, like once we got it dialed, it worked flawlessly down the river. Um, and so one of the things that, I mean, it, it, it's more important today that we sharpen our skills and do this collaboration and do the coaching um, than it has been in the past, just because of where we're at, in, you know, from a market perspective. And Everyone is looking for, you know, more ways to close a few more loans from their pipeline. And our focus today that we want to go on are, are two different things. Um, we want to talk about what we call pipeline protection, and we want to talk about what we call relationship retention. Those are both areas where loan officers have a lot of opportunity um, or a lot of risk, it, it, and you know, depending on how you look at it. So there's kind of a, I'm going to call it like a 25%, 75% rule. Um, and it's worth remembering this because this is just average nationwide with loan officers. 
we have over 10,000 loan officers using our system. And so we can see these things on a pretty good basis, like how people are performing. But about 25% of your pipeline, the current people in process with you, you pulled credit on them, you got them pre-qualified, you sent them out shopping. Um, they're, they're in your pipeline. 25% of them end up shopping with another lender during that loan process at some point. And, you know, unless you're paying attention to the alerts, unless you're taking action, um, and we'll cover a little bit more about that in a minute, but unless you're doing that, um, you just don't know about it. You don't have the insight to know that, one, you're at risk of losing that opportunity. Um, and, and two, that, you know, that's a, if you save the deal, that's a, as good as a new deal in your pipeline. Um, but then the other part is the 75%. And that is the percentage of past clients who you've previously closed a loan for who end up closing their loan with a competitor for their very next loan. Um, and again, these are statistics we see apply across the board, um, thousands and thousands of loan officers, and they're backed up by other uh, reporting services as well. But I want to emphasize it because if you can focus on these two things, you're going to find out you can pull more deals out of your pipeline. Deals in process that are working with you, you're going to close more of them. On top of that, you're going to get more deals out of your database, your relationship than you've previously um, captured. So that's really our focus for today's call. Um, but I guess, Louis, I, you were the one telling me the story because um, it was the the client retreat, right? Yeah, so we were just at a, um, one of those client retreats where it's the top producer in LOs uh, for for one of our enterprise clients that they put on. We were invited there. It was just a vendor. And, uh, you know, one, we heard a lot, you know, a lot more positive feedback on the predictive alerts um, than we have had in the past, right? When people were just busy as can be, they didn't necessarily focus on those. But we had a lot more people saying, hey, I started using those. They actually work. Um, here's what I'm finding. And so, you know, we could help them talk through that. But the other interesting thing that was kind of new is we would hear a lot of these producers saying, you know, besides the monitoring of my past client database, what is more important to me right now is being able to see when there's an inquiry on somebody that I've just recently given a pre qual to and send them off with a realtor because, you know, they've, it's, it's so hard to get somebody to that point nowadays um, that they just, you know, that's like bird in hand versus two in the bush. You just really don't want that one to leave. Um, and so, so they just made the point of like, yeah, I really like when I can see that, you know, I gave somebody prequal and two months later, they're off applying someone else with someone else. I can connect and pull them back in. And it's usually not, that big of a deal. It's just they're pounded with offers from every direction. So, um, so we kind of wanted to bring that up because we talk a lot about pulling deals out of your past clients, but we don't, you know, we don't do a lot of training on, Hey, keep an eye on your, your current pipeline as well, because you can lose deals from there just as, as easy as your past clients. And it, it's a crazy percentage. It really is one out of four of your current pipeline just on average are going to go out and have their credit pulled with someone else during that loan process. And so that's a risk point where if you catch them early with the real time triggers and you follow up, you can usually retain that. You can usually circumvent and, and avoid any kind of issue, but it takes conscious effort is, is kind of what we're trying to focus people toward. It takes a decision that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to follow up in this way every time this happens because that's my best chance of making sure this client doesn't go become someone else's client instead. And, and I'm slightly defensive guys, because I think you should pay that much attention to your past customers as well. Even if they're not in process with you, when they're starting alone with someone else, your ability to re-engage and make contact and follow up, it, it, it's a huge determining factor in whether that person is going to come back to you or not. And it's, not too hard to do, which we'll cover here in a minute. But um, one of the points that I think is worth noting, um, and and Louis brought it up to me last time we were talking about this, and it's stuck with me since. But when you get a referral from a referral partner, and that person chooses to go shopping with a competitor for one whatever reason, right? They're just it can be smart for them to do that competitive shopping, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go with someone else, but. Right. They're considering it, right? 
when that happens, if you don't play perfect defense and retain that deal, that sends a message to the realtor partner who sent you the referral that is really important that you consider. Um, I mean, people leave for a myriad of reasons, and you've probably all lost a client to somebody else. Um, but the truth is being able to play defensive on that, create a system, follow the script, do that follow-up to that set of people um, is going to be a really important component in retaining those realtor relationships. I, I show up to group trainings and I pay attention to what's going on. And you really do have to be on your A game to keep those realtor relationships. In today's marketplace, they have so many fewer deals than they've had in the past. They're willing to put up with less margin of error. And you losing a client to a competitor is in that realm of putting you at risk of losing a partnership. And so it, it's not just a play of capturing another deal. It's not just a play of retaining the other deal. There's a whole component of let's make sure that we're protecting our partner relationships as well, um, which to us, it's all about pipeline protection in that in that scenario. Um, and I guess if, if you guys aren't familiar, that's primarily through that credit trigger inquiry alert that we deliver. We tell you in real time, the moment one of those people in your database has their credit pulled for a mortgage. So if you aren't monitoring your current pipeline, like the moment they start having a conversation with you, they're in your CRM or they're in your LOS and they're being pushed to monitor base, um, you can start monitoring those within a day or two of them entering our system. So I, I would ensure that whichever rep you're working with on our team, if you don't have that in place, get that in place. You want your pipeline to be in the monitor base system the very moment that you start that conversation, because if they start having a conversation with someone else, you want to be aware of it. You want to be able to intercept and make sure you're staying on top of it. I mean, these consumers are getting hit with a ton of marketing and that's part of the, the risk, but I want to kind of jump over to the second portion of what we discussed talking about today, and that's relationship retention. Um, and this is kind of repetitive because a lot of you have been on these calls before, but the truth is guys, I'm going to keep saying it because there's more opportunity than I think most of us give it credit for. If you look at your database, every time you get a credit trigger and all, I mean, I recognize the names on the call. A lot of you guys are getting one or two or three of these a week. Every time you get one of those, that's one of your clients that started the loan process with someone else instead of you. And your ability to intercept and capture these business deals earlier through the predictive system, earlier through following up and nurturing is going to make a really big difference in what you pull through out of our system. So you guys might not know, but um, well, I'll give the I'll give you the basic math. We did the 25% figure earlier. Um, if you have a thousand people in your database, and they don't have to all be past customers, but but out of a thousand people, about um one percent, I think it's still one percent right now, mm -hmm. is starting the loan process, having their credit pulled for a mortgage every single month. For a little while last year, that dipped down into the 0.8% range, but we're back up to about 1%. And so out of well, a thousand- in a, normal, people, in a normal market, normal market, not meaning a big refi time, it's one and a half percent, you know, two uh, percent when there's some good rates. Yeah. And so, you know, a thousand people, that's 10 deals that are starting the loan process every single month out of your thousand contact database. And so I think there needs to be a, a mental shift where you say, every time I get one of these inquiry alerts, that was somebody that I should have caught sooner. Because now you have to fight harder to win an inquiry back than you do have to, you know, to win a, someone who you get a predictive alert on. And you should be looking at it and saying, I have a thousand person database. There are 10 loans a month that I can get out of this database every single month in this market. 10 deals that could be in my pipeline instead of somebody else's. And it should be somewhat insulting every time you get the tr credit trigger. It should be like, all right, let's figure out how to do just a little bit better here um, and nurture those. The credit trigger works. You guys are get getting business from it. We get good feedback on those alerts. But and the reason it works better for you than everyone that's buying random stranger credit triggers is you have that relationship. And so since you already have that relationship, it should be so much easier for you to be able to connect with that person prior to them pulling that trigger, right? Because you're not reaching out to a stranger and saying, hey, I'm a mortgage person and I want to talk to you about a mortgage. It's like, hey, I know you from this or we met back then at this point, I helped you with the loan, whatever it might be. Um, and 
You just need to have the connection before they get to that period so that they remember, oh yeah, he's still in the market. She's still in the market. Um, I'm going to think of them, you know, in a month or two when we think we might be listing our home. Well, and, and we have those scripts. Um, I don't know, maybe we can do a quick hand raise. How many of you since our last call have have jumped on and seen the the knowledge base, the monitor based knowledge base with all the scripts and the playbooks and all of what we're talking about here as a process that you can read the moment you get one of these alerts and you're wondering what to say. There's a button inside of monitor base by that alert Intel that tells you click here to see the scripts and playbooks. And it's going to tell you, hey, this is kind of how you should approach this and what you should be thinking about when you follow up uh, and some suggestions on things you could say. And those are thoughtful. They're designed specifically for that alert. But it, it's not our scripting that makes this work. It's not, you know, our algorithm works. But the truth is the thing that makes this whole thing work is the relationship that you've built with the person. And we know that you're the one that built the relationship. You're the one that has built that book of business. And for us to be able to say, hey, these are the ones you should be focusing on. Um, we recognize we're here to help but you're ultimately the one that is making these deals happen. There's only so much we can do with a letter and an email in comparison to you who has a connection, trust, and all of the you know past experience with that person. Um, it's it's not even a fair fight. You well, guys, yeah. so hey, we've done we've done a lot of different consumer direct marketing mm -hmm. before Monitor Base was Monitor Base, right? We did a lot of that direct mail and all the kind of things, and um, the reason that you know, it turned into this monitor based platform is in the process. We figured out if you're monitoring, or I mean, if you're marketing to a stranger with direct mail, you might get a half a percent response on that. Where if there's any sort of relationship where they know that you're a real person, it's 10 times the engagement rate that it is with a stranger. So like if I could convince you guys of anything, how to grow your business in the future, it would be just make more relationships, even if they're at a low level, they don't have to be all funded loans. Like if you could just put more and more people in that database, then we know a certain percentage of those are gonna be doing loans and we can show you what those are. And to have 10 times the engagement rate that your competitors, you know, like Quicken Loans or whatever's doing when they're consumer direct marketing to them, that's a huge, huge advantage. So you'll always be able to beat that you know, marketing costs that they have to pay because you have 10 times the advantage. Well, and it really is like you look at cost per acquisition. If someone's out there buying online triggers or they're paying for online leads or doing some of the things that you guys see those big groups do, um, they spend $3,000 in marketing costs to fund a single loan. Like that's, yeah. and if they can do that, they're, they're doing pretty good over here. You know, most of our users are spending less than two hundred dollars to fund a loan. Um, in most cases, you're spending less than a hundred dollars to get a loan in process from the alerts that we deliver. And yeah. we know that there are users that are spending twenty dollars to get a loan in process. And so that's a really big deal within the scheme of things. Um, oh, and I, I guess there are some questions that have come through that I've not been managing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll answer one of these because it kind of lines up with one of the points that I wanted to make. So Wade asks, so if I'm receiving emails about folks in my database that recently listed their homes, does that mean I have access to the script and such? Absolutely, Wade. Those are in there. Um, you should be getting these notifications. But I, I want to kind of tie this back. So as you're getting these notifications, as you're thinking about how to follow up and what to do, the advantage that you have over those institutions isn't about, hey, I've got to call and say the perfect thing. It isn't, you know, you've, I've got to call them 10 different times. It isn't, I've got to send them a bunch of automated text messages. Um, what it is, is this person already knows you. Chances are they like you and they trust you. They've had some sort of professional engagement relationship with you in the past. And so if you can follow up and touch base, if they don't even have to like you. They just knowing that you're real and you're not like a scammer that's calling them or sending them a piece of mail. I mean, there's there's so much distrust with stranger marketing consumer right now because of all the scams, right? So just knowing that you're a real person, that puts you ahead of everybody else. Well, yeah. And and ultimately what you have is hometown advantage. You have the local advantage. 
that is, I think to me is the thing that protects the smaller lenders from some of these bigger groups that are really trying to just like consume market share. And I think those relationships, the more you can capitalize on those, the more you can solidify those and protect those. Those are the things that are going to make you incredibly difficult to disrupt. It's going to be very difficult to come in and take your business or take over your market when you have an effective system. And so, I mean, we have the statistics, we have the data, we're giving you notifications of what's happening. We're giving you this, you know, the process of how to follow up and taking that action on a consistent basis, optimizing, you know, you know, monitor base said to say this, but I like it a little better when I, I follow up in this way, or, you know, I've turned that into a text message that's working really well. Um, or, you know, I have a quick email that I send to those people that gives them a loan comparison that really helps in this situation. Those are things that, you know, we're seeing people do that really work. They have built a process. They use their, you know, their, I want to say um, MBS Highway, but what is their new brand? Highway. Highway. All right. It's high, it's close enough. Um, you know, you've got your loan comparison tools, your total cost analysis, your debt consolidation tool, your, you know, rent to own. You've got all of these tools. And, and if you have some of those tool sets, you might find that when I get one of these credit triggers on someone that I closed a loan for, and they've been in the home for four years or more, what I need to be sending them is a debt consolidation tool. You know, hey, because if you guys look in the monitor base alerts, like if you're getting the emails, right? Most people, they look at our system and they think, yeah, it emails me when there's a credit trigger and some, you know, I follow up on that. If you click and you go view the profile, you can see their current FICO score, their mortgage balances, their revolving and then their installment balances. You have enough information there to populate an entire loan comparison of any scenario you'd like. And if you populate that, when you reach out to that person, you have actual numbers of where their debt is at, where their credit's at, where their mortgage is at, exactly their current scenario to arm you to be more helpful of a consultant, yeah, more I, to guide I, them. I would I would argue that th that's even more important, the credit profile on the predictive alerts, because then you can look at that and before you reach out, say, hey, I can see what these what would be beneficial to them. They they have this huge auto loan payment and some revolving debt, ton of equity. I'm just going to kind of put together a um, a comparison. So when I reach out and reconnect, that's like, hey, I was just going through your, you know, some of my past clients in the file, and um, I wanted, you know, this just looked like there's a, a huge benefit. So I thought I would reach out, right? But then you have a conversation piece that's not just somebody calling saying, hey, I'd like to talk about if you would like to do a mortgage or not, right? Um, so it's so relevant to them that this it just makes all the difference in the world in marketing. And really, guys, like I can't emphasize enough the home field advantage that you have in this outreach. It's not a cold call. It's not reaching out to random strangers that don't know you. Your ability to get someone to answer the phone, to respond, to engage, to trust you right out the gate is so much higher. It is like it is 10 times higher. Um, in fact, it's probably more than 10 times higher than your competitors. Um, your competitors, you know, they call those triggers 27 times. If you sometimes call your triggers once or twice, um, you're outperforming them by a lot. And that's a, like, I, I want to encourage you that you have a huge advantage, but I also want to tell you every time you get one of those triggers, that's a deal that is going with someone else unless you win it back. And so using the full suite of tools with the predictive analytics, with the triggers and being able to monitor and follow up what we want to see our users like a top user who's doing this well and gets their systems dialed i want them to be getting a fraction of the credit triggers that that anyone else is getting i would love if none of you ever got credit trigger the inquiry alerts again because what that tells you is you're running the predictive analytics and we're notifying you earlier in the process and now you're winning those deals easier faster before they're working with someone else and it's arming you to to start engaging sooner before they're out the door and you're having to pull them back into your court instead of someone else's. Or drop and your that, pricing to keep the deal or whatever. I mean, just, you, yeah. I mean, you guys know you're, you're doing this every day. And I mean, the thing that makes the Green River, the Green River is because the best other trout streams in the United States have 6,000 fish per mile. The Green River has 15,000 fish per mile. And so there's an unbelievable amount of opportunity in that space. And it should be encouraging for you to go out there and take action, knowing the amount of opportunity that you're 
have available to you that you have an option to capture, to catch, to bring in. And that's, I think, what we're providing here is a very rich environment with lots of opportunities of stuff that is you have the advantage over anyone else. And using those scripts, using those playbooks, using the systems we're talking about, you're going to be able to capture more deals. You're going to be able to close more deals out of your pipeline, stuff that's already working with you. You'll lose less of those to your competitors. You'll pull more through. And then out of your relationships, if you start doing that follow-up, those phone calls and text messages and emails, you're going to yeah. find that you're filling your pipeline with even more stuff. And hopefully, guys, getting less and less triggers. What I want to see is every so often you get a trigger and it's surprising because somehow the system didn't predict it. Right yeah. now, we predict about 75% of the triggers within 90 days before that trigger alert ever happens. So um, right now with our out, you know, if, if our systems were working well and you were doing really good follow-up, um, there's a decent chance that you could capture 75% of the triggers that you're currently getting before the triggers occur. So, so you don't ever get the trigger, you don't pay for that, but also you don't have to fight that out of your competitor's hands. So um, a couple of questions here before we wrap up in the next two minutes. Um, what is the overall conversion on predictive alerts for past clients? Um, Randy, I think one in 10 of our predictive alerts does start alone with somebody within 90 days. And we predict about 75% of our credit triggers with our predictive algorithm running. So if you get 10 uh, predictive alerts, one of those people is going to be starting that loan process in 90 days. Um, right. Whether The question is, what is the conversion for that user? That's We've looked at that. It's all over the board. And that's really why we're having this conversation is we've we've talked to the ones that we see have super great conversion to where they're paying you know 30 40 dollars um to close or to have a deal in the pipeline and it really comes down to them just saying yeah i just have a system of every day i try to reach out to those yeah. and i have a little workflow built right so um so yeah it it's all over the place as far as what the user converts but the average overall as far as the cost to make a deal um, for what predictive is, you know, under a hundred dollars um, or about a hundred dollars. And um, so, and, and, but in a deal, the way that we, what we consider a deal doesn't mean a closed deal, right? It means what we can actually see, which is we gave a user a predictive alert and within a 90 day period, they pulled credit you know, that user pulled credit, so meaning that that was somewhat back in their own pipeline. So, so two questions here. Um, Dom asked, do try merge soft pulls show up as a trigger? If so, what trigger type? Soft pulls don't show up as triggers. That's the characteristic of soft pulls. There's no way to get a trigger on a soft pull credit pool. So, um, that's just you're in the dark on those, and so is everyone else. So, so that is an advantage. Um, Wade asks, when is the next class to teach the basics of monitor base? Um, I would actually reach out to sales at Monitor Base and just request a training for you and your team. Um, we have a team standing by our account success team or even some of our sales staff can jump in and walk you through exactly what the system does, how it works, where to log in, what to do, give you all of those like step-by-step -step, um, instructions. So um, Wade, just email sales at Monitor Base, we'll hook you up. And then another one came in. I think all of the predictive alerts um, set up, but some are not really needed. Example, this person is a candidate cash out due to credit card usage. Can you tell me the best predictive alerts to set up the least cost? Well, Louis, I'll let you answer this one because you've actually been working on this exact thing. Yeah, so um, the, the, it's constantly changing. But what we found is that if those, if you're not converting those, it can be for a lot of reasons, right? There's some people that are super good at cash out and how to do those right now. And they're priced for it. And then there's people that are more focused on purchase. So if you're getting a predictive alert, that you're having a hard time converting and you've checked the playbooks and everything, I would you can actually go and turn that alert type off, that intel without turning off all predictive. Um so, but if you do that, then rethink that as time goes on, or maybe try to bring them back online because as what what we've seen just even in this year is that the conversion of the different predictive alerts has gone up and down to where some of them are all of a sudden spiking. Uh for example, like one of them right now that's huge and over the last month is any predictable alert that has to do with what's the, the inventory doing in that area. All of a sudden they were converting to loans like crazy. And it's just, you know, I think in those areas, kind of the word gets out that, Hey, inventory is a little better. We might be able to get a deal or just the fact that there's more inventory 
there's more deals starting to happen. So, um, but yeah, so if, you know, if you, again, if you need a training, our, our staff can help you figure out how to turn off those cash out alerts that aren't working for you. All right. Awesome. Thank you everyone who jumped on. There's one last question and I'll wrap this up because this applies to everyone. Um, we do these calls every month on the first Tuesday of the month. The purpose of the call is exactly this training, coaching, answering questions, and it's open to any of our users or any client who has assistants, members on their team that would also benefit from joining and seeing some of this. And, you know, if you show up and you attend three calls and then you feel like you're good, that's fine. Our goal is to, hear, to be here as a resource, as an encouragement, as a guide, as someone who can, you know, show you opportunity, show you what's working, what, you know, hey, we're seeing this change. Um, being at the cutting edge of that can help you stay on top of things. So yeah. that's really our goal is to help you in that way. Um, you guys are doing the work. You're the one with, with the relationships. It's really on you. And so we, we're not trying to take credit and say, hey, we're amazing. We're making all these deals. But we, what we are saying is we can help you guys. And, and if we can make that lift easier and we can, you know, give you some shortcuts, uh, that's really our goal. So um, if you want to get your assistant on this, if you want to get someone else, uh, you know, on this call, reach out to sales at Monitor Base. We have our account success team there that's able to schedule that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and the same like registration that you showed up to register for this registers you for these other calls and share that. That's another way someone can just join this group call. So we do have the one-on-one -on -one and we've got the group. Um, both are useful. They kind of each have their place. So um, any final thoughts, Louis? I think that covers on my side. Yeah, just, you know, in, in your point of, we want to tell you the trends that are happening right now. This popped up because I've been looking at all the data, but something that um, we do see kind of changing right now, there are streamlines, like refi streamlines, FHA streamlines that are starting to happen a little bit more. And it's because the rates have been high for long enough. Um, and there's always somebody that's given a half a percent higher rate than some, than somebody else. So not a ton, but just kind of interesting to start seeing that tick up, even though rates haven't gotten any better. Uh, the other thing is that the majority of um, FHA type refis, uh, there's actually more that are coming from conforming loans to FHA than there are FHA to FHA. And it's, you know, probably they've racked up a good amount of debt. Their FICO is low. Maybe they need an FHA loan. You guys would probably know better, but that was just seemed kind of interesting that, you know, don't overlook if somebody's got a conforming loan, they might be happy going to an FHA loan and paying off and just relieving some, some debt. So the debt's never been higher. Credit card debt has never been higher in our history. It's yeah. a lot of these people don't have options. And I think you guys know that better than anyone. So, um, that's the, I mean, it's 25% of the business right now and 95% of that is cash out. So, so that, you don't want to overlook it. All right, guys, I really <laughs> We jumped on the participation, the questions. Um, one final thought. If you guys have a topic that you're like, hey, will you guys just do a training on XYZ on this call? Let us know. If it fits the format, we'll do that on the next call. Just email me. It's William at Monitor Base. Um, we're always looking for like we we're coming together and we're Louie and I are saying, Hey, I think this is what would help be helpful. If you guys are like, hey, you know what would actually be helpful? This over here, yeah, let us know. Do. We'll do that. Yeah. Um, we really are just looking for ways to help. It's a marketplace where I think if we can help you, it, it benefits us too, and it benefits the whole market. And so that really is our motivation. And I hope you guys feel that here in, in us just like, how can we how can we help this uh, lift? So thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Look forward to having you on the next call and share it with other people who might be benefited from joining and, and learning. So catch you guys hey. next.